like and subscribe please hey guys welcome to this week's review of real housewives of beverly hills i am so happy that crystal did not backtrack with her use of the word violate yes in my personal opinion is it a strong word yes but crystal didn't misuse it sutton did violate her privacy you barged into her room without permission she was undressed and she felt some sort of way about it it is what it is you know and crystal said it right and i said the same thing you cannot do wrong to someone and then that person reacts and then you get mad about how they react for the wrong that you did it's absolutely ridiculous okay i understand you feel a certain way but to expect a an apology is just way too much for me right and crystal's like you're crying for attention and i think i don't know if sutton is necessarily crying for attention i just don't think sutton is very great at managing her emotions at all and she's all over the place and listen that's what makes her great television I'm here for it, and I do like Sutton, but Sutton, you really need to get over it because Crystal didn't bring it up. Crystal didn't say anything, and Sutton even admitted it. it was just Crystal's presence that made her uncomfortable. Like, that's just ridiculous to me. If Crystal's not saying anything to you, then leave it be. And I watch Cheryl's World, and you know, Gabor is often on the panel, and he's hilarious, and he made a great point. Sutton didn't say anything about Kathy when Kathy called her Thomasina, okay? She didn't freak out at Kathy. And the reason being, allegedly, maybe, is because Kathy is a billionaire. So Sutton is really picking and choosing who she's lashing out at. Um, lashing out at. And she feels like she can lash out at Crystal because Crystal is new, right? But she can't do it to Kathy because Kathy has the connections, which is absolutely ridiculous. Like Crystal's presence can trigger you so much. But then when Kathy actually says something derogatory towards you, you have absolutely nothing to say. It's absolutely ridiculous. I really felt sorry for Crystal in that moment. You know, like Garcelle got on my nerves a little bit like... Listen, she said what she said. It is what it is. I did like that Erica, after comforting Sun, came to Crystal and kind of sat beside her and, and, and kind of is like low-key saying, don't worry, honey, we know that Sun's a little whoop, 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 whoop. Don't take it too personally. We're just sort of coddling her so she doesn't run off, right? But we know she's a little cuckoo. Just sort of accept it, right? And... It is what it is. It was a cute little scene. It was a funny scene. Sun didn't say anything too bad with by insulting her pants. So I'm glad that they were able to move on from it. Now, I never, until the reunion, I don't want to hear about this stupid violation gate, okay, barging in the room gate, nude gate. I don't want to hear about this argument again. I really, really don't, and I hope it's done. And Kyle, Kyle and Kathy... You better shut up and not bring it up again, right? I know, Kyle, you need a storyline, but please do not do it. We have Erica's storyline coming up, okay? So let's move on to that. Let's talk about that. So let's just get right into it, right? Other stuff happened this episode, but that's just pretty much filler. Because everybody is here for Erica Girardi and her storyline. Now, I shouldn't say storyline, that's a bit callous. At the end of the day, this is her life. And she is really going through it. She is. I have mixed feelings with Erica. Like I said before, I have empathy for her, but I'm not sure I have sympathy. Right? When you look at everything that has been coming out, right? Basically, her husband, Tom, being a scammer. It is a bit coincidental that she files for, the, um, files for divorce. And then, all of a sudden, Tom is being sued for scamming his clients out of money. 
It's a little bit, I mean, yes, it could be a coincidence. She just so happened to file, to, uh, file for a divorce and then all of this, this stuff came out. But I'm not really buying it because it seems like Erica has been having issues in a relationship for a while now. Giving her the benefit of the doubt, I would say issues probably started to arise as soon as she joined the show. Because I think the relationship was able to work when Tom kind of had that power, right? But as soon as Erica's star power started to arise and she started to make her own money and she had more influence, he was bothered by that because while she's on the, the rise of her career, he's getting older. He's on his decline, right? And we know that Tom claims that he has Alzheimer's. I don't know if that's really true or not. I mean, it isn't so far-fetched to believe because he is an older man in his 80s, but that is not an excuse for what he did to those people. He could be going through Alzheimer's, but that doesn't take away from the fact that when he was of sound mind, he has scammed people for decades now. This is not a new phenomenon, right? So it's just weird that when the shit hits the fan, Erica is like, I'm out. I don't want to deal with this. Even and he, when she's talking about her relationship, she keeps saying that he wasn't supportive of her. He wouldn't let her in. She couldn't tell him anything. She noticed that his sight was, you know, not as great. He wasn't able to hear, and she would say, Hey, honey, you need to get this check out, blah, 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 and he would just shut her down. So this relationship has not been working. So what was her motivation to stay in the relationship? Well, I hate to say it, her motivation to stay in the relationship it was because he was still able to fund her lifestyle. At the end of the day, it's so funny when... Lisa Rinna comes to her home, Sutton, Crystal, the first thing that comes out of her mouth is, oh my gosh, it's so small, I know, it's so tiny, it's so tiny. And listen, it's not the biggest place in the world, but it, by no means is it a small house. It's a decent sized house, it's a beautiful home, she has a beautiful backyard with a pool. She doesn't realize the level of luxury that she has. Right, But to her, from what she used to have to what she has now, yes, it's a downsize. And I do feel, because she keeps bringing it up, that she's a little bit ashamed about it. So that tells me she's the type of person that really values material wealth, which makes sense. I mean, they're in Beverly, Beverly Hills, right? That she's a very materialistic person. She's all about labels. You know, she in previous seasons, she would show off her expensive clothing, her jewelry, her shoes. I, it's her brand. It's what she's about. So I feel like the reason she was she stayed in that relationship, it was because, okay, it's not the most emotionally supportive. It's low-key toxic, not low-key, high-key toxic. You know, Tom, definitely, I have no... It's not hard for me to believe at all that Tom must have been emotionally abusive to her. Of course. But she stayed in that situation because she was able to benefit financially. And as soon as she couldn't benefit financially from that situation anymore, she filed for divorce. As soon as she saw the whole thing starting to crumble and fall apart, she found a way out. Because like she said, she's worked very hard to build her name, you know? She's not just a housewife anymore. She is a celebrity. And as a celebrity, your name is very important. That's all you have at the end of the day. So she doesn't want to be tied up with this. And she wants to, you know, dissociate herself as far as possible from this whole mess. But... <sighs> Here's the thing, you can't, you may have not been directly responsible 
but you are involved in some way. And I wish, maybe we'll see it in later episodes, but I wish you could have just acknowledged that she has been able to live a certain life because of Tom and his scamming ways, right? And she gave great advice, you know, she directed it at Crystal, but I think this is great advice for anybody. If you're with someone, especially if they make, you know, an, a substantial amount of money, you should see the bank accounts, you should know what's going on, where they're getting their money, in case, you know, something is wrong. You know, that you make sure they're not committing fraud because if they are and you're married to them, you can get caught up on it. Get caught up. You can get caught up in a messy situation. So that is great advice, right? But I say to Erica, you knew something was off. Lisa Renna kept saying it. Erica's smart. She's a smart lady. She's a smart lady. Then if she's a smart lady, hello? You knew that he was hiding something. I'm not holding her responsible for what he did, but you knew something was off. You have, you have admitted it several times throughout this episode. You could have got a divorce at the end of the day. Especially at this point, you're on the show, you're bringing in your own money. Yes, there would have had to be a downgrade in your lifestyle, right? But I think Bravo wouldn't have gotten rid of you at all. Bravo adores Erica. The fans adore Erica. She, the fashion labels adore Erica. I'm pretty sure they would send her free stuff. She still could have figured it out. Would it have been the easiest? No, but it's not like she would have been out on the street. So she did have options. It's not like... If she had divorced him, she would have nowhere to go. Maybe before she got on the show? Sure. But now, I mean, why did you stay? Why did you? You could have left. And I feel like... I don't want to say it's karma. But I am saying that your actions have consequences. And this is just the consequences. You know, they say nothing in life is free. You were able to live this lifestyle, and now you're paying for it. All that being said, I do have empathy for her. You know, I don't think she was directly involved in this situation, but she benefited from it. And once you knew that something wasn't right, and you had the opportunity, you should have left. Because if had she have gotten a divorce two years ago, right and then this stuff had come out about tom then you know she could have played it differently right but the fact that you're just getting a divorce now it just doesn't look right to me at all but you know i am happy as a viewer i mean it sounds callous to say but i am happy that whether i believe she's telling the truth or not whether she's culpable or not i will commend her for opening up right because she could have easily just shut down played the ice princess and not really let us know what's going on you know some people especially those that are not a fan of erica may say that she's laying it on thick she's trying to be the victim in the situation but I say at least she's giving us something and it's going to just be up to the audience to feel how they feel. I just wish she would acknowledge the fact that she has been able to benefit and live a certain lifestyle. And I think if she's able to do that, the audience would lay off her a little bit, you know, but the fact that she's just sort of playing the victim and she's just trying to distance herself without really acknowledging how her life is intertwined in this mess. It's rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. So, I mean, that's all I gotta say for this episode. So, see you guys.